Hey y'all, welcome to my Huta guide as of Genshin Impact 4.1. Huta is a character that has stood up to the test of time and still remains one of the best pyro DPS in the game. What Director Hu brings to the table is incredibly fast pyro infused charge attacks that can trigger vaporize for some crazy damage. In this guide, I'll be covering everything you need to know about Huta, so let's charge into it. As per usual, let's start with her talents. Hu Tao's normal attack talent is the main source of her damage, but only when she's cast her elemental skill. So let's get into that. Hu Tao's elemental skill, Guide to Afterlife, is the core of why she does amazing damage. On cast, she will burn 30% of her current HP, so whatever she has at the moment and not her max HP. And in return, it puts her into the Paramental Papilio state. What that does is boost her attack based on her max HP up to 400% of her base attack, and gives her a power infusion on her normal and charged attacks, with some interruption resistance as a bonus. This state will end either after 9 seconds or by swapping her out. Pairing the bonus attack Hu Tao gets from casting her skill with the pretty high multipliers from her normal attacks and especially charged attacks are what make her do ridiculous damage. For this reason, your main goal when playing Hu Tao is to hit as many charged attacks as you can before her Paramita Papilio state ends. Hu Tao is especially good at this since her charged attacks have no ICD, otherwise known as internal cooldown. A lot of abilities have standard internal cooldown, only allowing them to apply their elements every 3 hits or 2.5 seconds. Hu Tao's charged attack has none of this, and because of it, can activate reactions with every hit as long as the other elements are fast enough to keep up. As a bonus, by hitting enemies with her charged attacks while in this state, she applies the Blood Blossom effect on enemies, doing pyro damage every 4 seconds. This can be seen as a negative since it might trigger vaporizes that do less damage and mess up your charged attack vaporizes. The part where she burns 30% of her current HP isn't bad either, since it actually makes her stronger, due to a couple of her other talents, one of which is her burst. Hu Tao's elemental burst, Spirit Soother, is not just great at dealing damage, but also by providing her with a panic heal option. On cast, Hu Tao will hurl a ghost around in a large AoE that does pyro damage that will also heal her depending on the number of enemies hit by it. But, it will also do more damage if Hu Tao is under 50% of her max HP when it's cast. However, even if it does do a decent amount of damage, I wouldn't recommend using it every rotation for a few reasons. One is that Hu Tao can have a hard time generating energy, and focusing on building for more energy recharge will make her do less damage when you can prioritize her other stats like crit, EM, HP, or attack. Second is that Hu Tao will generally want to stay under 50% of her max HP due to one of her passives, which I'll get into in a little bit, but both of these factors add up to her not exactly wanting to use her burst every time it's up. Hu Tao's first ascension passive is more of a team buff than it is useful for her. After the Paramita Papilio state from her skill ends, she will give 12% crit rate to the whole team, excluding herself for 8 seconds. Pretty nice and simple buff. Note about this is that her skill can be considered ended by swapping her off early. Hu Tao's 4th ascension passive is the reason behind all of those memes of her players never wanting to be healed. While under 50% of her max HP, Hu Tao gains 33% more pyro damage bonus. This is a significant buff since it synergizes with her already burning her own HP, but since her skill only burns 30% of her current HP in one use, she would need a second one to get under 50% if she starts with full HP. So this passive would only be active from the second rotation and onwards. But this is why Hu will generally prefer having a shielder rather than a healer. Now that you know what Hu Tao does, which talents should you level first? For her talent priority, level up her normal attack first since it makes up the majority of her damage. Next up is her elemental skill for a bigger attack boost. And lastly, her elemental burst. It still does a good amount of damage but is not as important as her other two talents. Now that you have a better grasp on how she works, how can you get yours to become the broken DPS everyone says she is? Let's go over the build, starting with her artifacts. Since Hu Tao can only consistently trigger Vaporize, her preferred artifact sets will follow suit. Starting off, Hu Tao's general best set is the 4-piece set of Crimson Witch of Flames. It gives a 15% power damage bonus, and even though she can't fully max out the 4-set effect, it's still fantastic. Boosting her power damage bonus more and all pyro reaction damage including Vaporize are all what make it her general best set. Next is the 4-piece of Shimanoa's Reminiscence. If you've been farming for Emblem of Severed Fate for a long time, you might have gone 
on some good enough Shimanoa pieces to form a 4 piece set. In that case, the 4 piece set effect is pretty good on Hu's house since it buffs normal and charged attacks. The only drawback to using it is that her burst may not be up when you need it most since the 4 set effect needs to burn 15 energy to activate. Because of this, her playstyle also becomes a bit more restricted since you can't burst immediately after using her skill. You know, the only way it does any meaningful damage! So, 4 piece Shimanawa is only a good option if you're purely focusing on her charge attack damage and not as concerned with her burst. Thirdly is the last complete set I would recommend, the 4 piece set of Gilded Dreams. Plain and simple, gives EM and even more EM or attack percent depending on the elements of your team. Really good for Hutao since she primarily wants to trigger Vaporize. Overall, it is just barely worse than 4 piece Crimson, so much so that it is usually a substat difference. But the set is so much more valuable to farm overall since it's paired with Deepwood Memories whereas Crimson is with Lava Walker, which is a pretty set in most cases. So you can spend your resin on this set while using the strongbox to get crimson pieces if you want to. Lastly, any mix of HP% percent EM or power damage bonus percent sets will also do really well in Hutao if the substats on your pieces are significantly better than if you were trying to force 4 piece set bonuses. Now that you have an idea of what sets Hutao wants to use, what stats should you prioritize on her actual pieces? Let's talk about the main stats first. On her sands, who will want either HP% percent or Elemental Mastery. What she prefers here depends on your account and how you want to run her. With that said, an EM Sands is usually better for damage unless you have a heavier EM weapon on her like the Dragon's Bane. HP% percent will make her lose a bit of damage in exchange for making her tankier. Going to her goblet, Pyro Damage Bonus% percent is the clear best main stat for improving her damage. Lastly, for Who's Circlet, she wants Crit% percent, whichever crit you have less of. In terms of your substat focus on Hu Tao, first she will want at least 100 EM or higher to multiply those Vaporize numbers. Second is crit percent, third is HP percent, then attack percent. From there, any straight rolls of ER that you get won't be bad to have. Since Hu Tao's burst is a bit of a lower priority for her, you can generally be fine with about 110 to 120 percent for her energy recharge. Alright, so you have her artifacts, but what weapons are good on her? Hu Tao isn't exactly flexible on the weapon she wants. Most of her good weapons cost either money or a fair amount of RNG to have. With that said, let's go through them. First up is the White Tassel. This weapon can only be obtained through opening chests in Liyue. So if you've completely finished exploring Liyue and fed off all your copies, you're out of luck for this weapon. But should you have it, it's pretty decent for a 3 star weapon, offering a crit rate substat and bonus normal attack damage. Next weapon and the last general weapon I'd recommend if your luck's completely done bad is the Black Cliff Pole. Not worth spending your Stardust on unless you really have nothing that I'll mention later on, but it's got a nice crit damage secondary stat. Passive can basically be considered non-existent due to its inconsistent activation requirement of killing enemies. Before I go into the gacha or paid weapons, I'd like to make an honorable mention for the Missive Wind Spear. It was only available through one of the version 3.1 events, but it makes for Hu Tao's best non-gacha weapon since it gives a lot of attack percent and EM after you trigger an elemental reaction. Moving on to the 4 star gacha and paid options for Hu Tao. First up is the Lithic Spear. Attack percent! More attack percent! and a crit rate bonus depending on the number of Liyuan characters you have. Can be good since one of her best teams is composed entirely of Liyuan characters. Otherwise, I wouldn't go for it if you have this next one that'll get to, especially since it's locked to limited event banners. Speaking of that next weapon, the Dragon's Bane. It's got a huge EM stat and a passive that boosts the wielder's damage if they're hitting enemies affected by either Pyro or Hydro. Because of that insane combination of effects, this is an amazing weapon for Hu if you manage to pull it. Lastly, the battle pass weapons. Deathmatch is a big crit rate stat stick, and stat stick only because the passive is either too small to matter or inconsistent at best. But the real money is in the new pole arm released in the 4.0 battle pass, the Ballad of the Fjords. Less crit rate than deathmatch, sure, but if you have at least three elements in the party, the wielder gains 120 EM, going up to 240 EM at max refinement. Not only does it give a big chunk of EM, big enough to reach a good number of it, but it also gives a crit rate substat, two very valuable stats for Huta to have. Let's end off the weapon section by going over her best 5 star options, starting with the Primordial Jade Winged Spear. High base attack, a crit rate secondary stat, and an attack stacking buff on hit that gains a damage bonus when maxed. Not a bad weapon, but it will generally perform closer to the 4 star options rather than the rest of the 5 star ones. Next up is Hu Tao's second best, the Staff of the Scarlet Sands. Incredibly high crit rate substat, and an effect that converts a percentage of the user 
user's EM to attack. The passive will further boost that conversion every time the wielder hits an elemental skill. Now, you might be thinking, who tells elemental skill doesn't do damage? But what can trigger this effect is her blood blossoms. So basically, don't rely on the passive to get more value out of this weapon. The crit stat and base EM to attack conversion already make this weapon powerful. Last but not least, who tells best and signature Staff of Homa. It gives a whopping 66.2% crit damage on the substat, an HP increasing effect, and a passive that further boosts the user's attack based on their max HP, giving a more attack if the user is under 50% of their max HP. Sound familiar? By equipping this weapon, Hu Tao not only gets a 33% boost to her power damage bonus, but also a stronger buff to her attack. Fantastic weapon overall, sure, but perfect for Hu Tao since she drains her own HP. And those are good weapons for Hu Tao. But I'm sure you've heard of the famous comparison of power upgrades on this character. So let's get into Hu Tao's constellations. Are they worth it, or should you go ghost on them? Hu Tao's constellations are a mixed bag, with her first and sixth ones being substantial upgrades and everything in between being small quality of life upgrades. C1 is Hu Tao's biggest constellation, bar none. Her charged attacks don't consume stamina in her Paramita Papilio state. This sounds really minor, but when you consider that this constellation gives not only offensive capabilities but also defensive flexibility, it is among one of the greatest first constellations in the game. Before C1, your main method of using her charged attacks should be to jump cancel, but now dash cancelling becomes a far better option as it's faster and smoother to play as well. I'll get into both of those in the combo section, but for now, just know that the combination of this constellation and Staff of Homa is essentially Hu Tao at max power. C2 increases Hu's Blood Blossom damage by 10% of her max HP, as well as allowing her burst to apply the status onto enemies as well. This is a pretty small damage buff. Nice, but not really worth pulling for. C3 and 5 give 3 talent levels to her skill and burst respectively, meaning a bit bigger of an attack buff and bigger burst damage. C4 is kinda underwhelming. Whenever Hu Tao defeats an enemy that has Blood Blossom applied onto them, the rest of the party, so Hu Tao not included, will gain a 12% buff to their crit rate for 15 seconds. Not good at all since you need to kill an enemy to activate the effect, and her A1 passive already shares crit rate anyways. Basically, this is just a stepping stone to C6 if you already got here. And what a C6 this is. If Hu Tao goes under 25% of her max HP, or takes a hit where she normally should have died, she won't die. After meeting one of those conditions, she gets 200% elemental and physical resistance, greater interruption resistance, along with 100% crit rate for the next 10 seconds. But this constellation can only be activated once every minute. Even so, this constellation is very much worth its status as her C6. Why while it can be hard to force Hu into less than 25% of her max HP, this is an enormous buff that might be worth building around, with lesser crit rate and more crit damage, EM, HP, or attack. All of those buffs make this an incredible constellation to have should you decide to pull for it. To wrap up on Hu Tao's constellations, C1 is by far her biggest milestone upgrade, making her feel more complete as a character, especially with it being obtainable on the earlier side. But going to anywhere in between C1 and C6 isn't worth it unless you're going all the way, since they don't offer all that much in relation to C1. With the constellations over, what teams can you run Hu Tao in? You might have noticed I was very aggressive in saying that Hu Tao is a vaporized DPS. This can make your teams incredibly simple to build, or unfortunately restrictive. Since Melt doesn't exactly work with how fast she's applying Pyro, Overload because it sucks, and Burgeon or Burning for the fact that she's going to die twice as fast. Therefore, Vaporize is her best option, albeit an extremely powerful one. Seeing as that is the case, Hu Tao's Vaporize teams generally follow a mold of her, Sing Cho, a shielder, and a flexible last slot. Sing Cho is her best support, providing the most dominant off-field source of Hydra application via both the Orbital Swords and his burst that also applies Hydra whenever you use a normal attack. Not to mention, since Hu Tao is a character that thrives at less than ideal HP for survivability, Sing Cho brings some defense in the orbital swords that reduce the damage you're taking, giving more interruption resistance, as well as healing the active character whenever one of them breaks. 
All of this means that Hu Tao is eternally married to Xing Zhao. So, let's go through your options for those last two slots. First setup is Double Hydro, one of the most powerful teams in the game. Fill in the remaining two slots with Yelan and Zhang Li. Putting Yelan onto this team not only gives Hu Tao even more consistent Hydro application to the point of overkill, but also a damage increasing passive that goes up over time. Not to mention that by having a second Hydro character, that unlocks the Elemental Resonance effect, boosting the max HP of all party members by 25%. Zhang Li is really just the second best teammate for Hu Tao. Not only does he pack the strongest shield in the game with strong interruption resistance to match, but also gives buffs to the team damage through the 4-piece set of tenacity of the Millilith, and the universal resistance reduction on everything. Add this up with everything I mentioned before, and it's no surprise that this is one of the best teams in the game. On the flip side, you can replace Zhongli for Kazuha if you're not extremely worried about survivability. The second team structure is using the 4 set of Veerdus and Venerer to reduce resistances on enemies and stack swirl damage. This team setup can be pretty flexible if you can't use the double hydro team. The last two slots on this team are generally 1, a second pyro character to apply the element, among many other things depending on who exactly you decide to use, and of course an animal character holding 4 piece Veerdus and Venerer. For your second pyro character, you have a lot of options. C4 Yanfei and Toma make for good shielders for Hu Tao as well as being able to apply pyro so that you can swirl it. Only problem you might run into is that both of their shielding capabilities come from their burst. Bennett can be good even if you can't keep Hu Tao under 50% of her HP, since Bennett mostly makes up for it with more attack. For an unorthodox flex slot, Shangling can also be used as an outside source of Pyro to swirl Globa to activate the Viridescent passive. As for the animal character, Sucrose or Kazuha are recommended because of their other buffing capabilities aside from just reducing enemies' resistances. Sucrose for an elemental mastery buff, Kazuha for elemental damage bonus. The last team structure I'll go over is Mono Pyro, truly the most monkey way of playing Hu Tao. Due to the absolute insane power of Bennett, Shengli, and Kazuha as a combo, Hu Tao's pyro damage can skyrocket to crazy levels. Sure, Bennett heals her past 50%, but Kazuha can make up whatever extra power damage you would've gotten from her A4 passive. You can also choose to use Zhongli or Toma in place of Shengling if you need extra protection. That's some of the teams you can use, but I did mention some charge attack cancels you can use to maximize her damage, so let's get into those. Hu Tao can seem really annoying to play at C0 because of one big thing that hinders her damage, stamina. At C0, sprinting and using charge attacks both consume stamina, either making it so you think that you should save more stamina in case you need to dodge, or if you need to use stamina prior to starting her combos, make Hu Tao do less damage because she can't spam them effectively. So what's the answer? jump cancels. See, you don't actually have to wait for the charge attack animation to finish for it to count as damage. As long as it makes contact with an enemy, it counts, meaning that immediately after, you can cancel it and start a new one, in this case, by jumping. If you can time it right, you can get a huge damage increase by being able to use more charge attacks than if you didn't cancel them at all. On top of that, jumping doesn't consume stamina and if you cancel it right away, it also doesn't change your position, which is particularly good for enemies that don't move. For this method, there are two ways of doing this to fully maximize her damage, starting off with the N1CJ, or one normal attack into a charge attack, capping off with a jump cancel. This is the most effective combo if your hydro application is fast enough to keep up with it. Only problem is that even if you don't sprint in this combo, it basically ends up as if you did in terms of stamina consumption. To avoid this, you can use a slightly slower but safer N2CJ, where instead of one normal attack, you can use two to ensure hydro is stuck onto the enemy before using her charge attack, then jump to cancel the enemy animation. Hu Tao's third option is dash cancel, but this only really opens up after getting C1 since her charge attacks won't consume stamina. For dash canceling, use the N1CD combo, the one normal attack into charge attack, then dash to cancel the animation. Minor note that if you do this too fast, you can run into the 0.8 second sprint cooldown, so you can also weave in a jump cancel every two dash cancels to avoid that problem. Of course, hearing all about how Hu Tao works, her best teams, the combos is probably cool and all, but let's do a showcase to see how everything ties together. For this showcase, I'll be using her in the Double Hydro and VV Vaporize team setups. For reference, the Hu Tao I'll be using is at level 90, C0, with Triple Crown Talents. Here is the build. Let's get on to the showcase. Roll the clips!
Let's wrap up this video. Hu Tao is a crazy good pyro DPS that has withstood the test of time since her release back in version 1.3. She's got some of the highest single target damage in the game that's easy to access as long as you've got Xing Chou. Because of that, Hu Tao is great at both low investment and max investment, with her still being one of the top choices for speedruns. For more details, check out the Kuchi mains guys linked in the description below. Leave a like if you found this guide helpful. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back for another video. See ya.